You know when you go to Target and they have that little dollar, two dollar section at the front and it's full of all these colorful, fun, random tchotchkes that you don't actually need, but you also have to have? I am the person, y'all, that that was designed for. I love my impulse buys. So I decided to rein it in. And one great way to reduce the likelihood of impulse buying and to just save money in general is to pay cash for everyday needs. It's just, it's more painful to hand over your physical cash. Still, only 19% of Americans prefer paying for in-person transactions with cash. I mean, this is really talking about those everyday spending needs like your Target run, hitting the grocery store, going to bars, things like that. But y'all know me, so I am going all in. I'm gonna pay cash only for everything for 30 days. Let's see how it goes. My prediction is that I save 1000% because <laughs> I'm definitely not part of that 19% of Americans I mentioned earlier and I always pay with a card because I hate going to the ATM, so. <laughs> so here's a fun challenge. I have an internet bank and I was reading the policies on their website, which you should do in any situation, but definitely if you plan on taking out cash more regularly, just to see A, if they have any limits, most pretty much all do have cash limits that you can take out per day. And you can also check their ATM fees and policies. Like for example, my bank does not reimburse for ATM fees. Like if I go to an ATM outside of their network, which they don't, they don't have any of their own ATMs, but they do have a network of ATMs I can use without a fee. But if I go to a different ATM, they're not gonna reimburse that fee that that local ATM charges. So that's important to know. So I am going to now try and find one of their fee-free ATMs because yes, $3 isn't a ton of money, but that adds up, right? Wish me luck. While we're here, let's get bread. Place your item in the bagging area. If you have food, just like that, we have change. There are some perks with using cards that I think are worth discussing. In general, cards give you more protections for fraud, just security in general. You have more protections definitely with a credit card, but a debit card would still be better than cash in that respect. And then with a credit card, you also get those rewards, whether they're cash back rewards, whether, whether they're travel points and other perks for having the card. And then just think about the fact that as long as you're using it responsibly, a credit card can help you grow or build your credit and those things are worth mentioning. So one kind of cool thing if you're thinking about paying bills cash is that you can sometimes avoid that, you know, the convenience fee or the service fee that you get charged when you're paying a bill online with a card. However, <laughs> one of my utility companies doesn't accept cash payments. They don't accept in-person payments. Therefore, if they can't accept cash, there's no way to pay cash. So I'm gonna have to go and buy a money order and mail that in, which means at least a couple of dollars. So that money that I'm saving on a convenience fee, I'm now getting zero convenience and am instead putting that money towards buying money orders because I'm just gonna mail them all in old school style, old school style at the same time. So not great. I'm gonna be honest. Like when you think about, I could just be in bed paying with a card right now. Not that I'd be in bed at four o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon. I'm just saying that I could theoretically do that. But here we are in the streets of LA trying to figure out where to buy a money order. Another fun thing that I just experienced <laughs> is that your bank might possibly get a little bit concerned if they see you all of a sudden taking out big old chunks of cash. And so they might actually block your ability to take out cash until you just verify. So I got a text message like, yo, you good? I am good. <laughs> Thank you for asking. So here I am. I had to take out way more cash than I usually would <laughs> because I have to pay bills, but like, or shoes. No, I'm going to keep the lights on, but actually having this big stack of cash makes me just feel like I should give you guys a little reminder, make sure you practice basic safety. I mean, you should always be aware of your surroundings and things like that. But if you're carrying lots of cash around, make sure you're extra aware of your surroundings and that you're paying attention. You're not texting on your phone or whatever while you walk. Okay. 
I'm finally almost done. So, sorry, I'm just over it. <laughs> I have some cash left over still, and because I'm over it, like I just mentioned, I'm just gonna put the cash back into my account. Um, but I don't, I can't remember if I told you guys, but I have an internet bank, which means it doesn't have any brick and mortar locations. So if you are considering like the all cash life and you get to the point where you need to actually put money into your bank, it can be a little bit challenging if you have an internet bank like I do, but it's not impossible. You have a few options. You could either A, if you have another bank that is a standard brick and mortar bank, you could obviously go and deposit the cash there and then transfer it over. You could buy a money order and then do a mobile deposit. Just keep in mind money orders usually cost a couple dollars and you might only be able to buy them in like $500 or $1,000 increments depending on where you get it from. You could also, which this is the route I'm gonna go, you could see if your bank has any partnerships with local retailers. Mine does, so I can go into a bunch of different retailers within my neighborhood to deposit the cash that way. Or some banks have ATMs that will accept cash. So you've got some options. I survived. And your first question I'm sure is, did I save money? And the answer is yes. Mainly because I just didn't feel like having to make extra trips to the ATM, but uh, so the things that like I normally would have done like shopping or hitting random LA events just didn't happen. I also was a lot more conservative with my spending. When I went out with friends, I pretty much just stuck to the absolute necessities for the month. And I saved probably twice as much as I usually do monthly. If I was saving that extra every month, in addition to my normal savings, like that would add up to a really nice chunk of annual savings. Obviously, I can't say if this is, you know, normal, if it's high, if it's low, because everyone's spending habits are different. The main takeaway that I can give y'all is that I think that it would make you more intentional about how you choose to spend your money. When we're swiping a debit or credit card, we're kind of detached from the money actually being spent. This journey made me think a lot about the envelope budgeting method, or if you are on TikTok, it's the cash stuffing method. So with that system, you put your intended cash into labeled envelopes for the month, and then you only spend money from the envelopes on the corresponding expense. I opted against giving myself an additional challenge within the challenge, so I just sort of mentally allocated funds to different things. But a method like this could be something to consider, like especially, since if you're not like me and you don't mind taking ATM trips, this could really help you <clears throat> keep your spending in check even more. And even if you didn't wanna use actual physical cash, there's digital methods of doing it as well. But for me, while I did save a lot, I did not enjoy the process at all. So while I can see the benefit, it's not something that I personally would continue. But paying cash isn't the only way to rein in your spending. I did a whole video about ways to save. My friend and my fellow nerd, Tommy, he recently did videos with tips to save on groceries and another one on it, saving for gas. The key really that you wanna keep in mind is if you're thinking about adopting either a new budgeting method or any other shift you wanna make, you have to make sure that you pick something sustainable. <laughs> if you feel tortured during every second of it, like I did, it's gonna to be tougher to sustain over time. Thanks for watching, Control Finance. Are you looking for ways to take control of your budget, but you don't want the hassle of actually having to create a budget? Check out my video around budgeting apps to check out that will help you automate the process. I'll see you there, bye.